Welcome back to it, your Feel Good Breakfast show, Expresso Live here on S3. On a Tuesday morning, you know what we like to do. We talk about health and really yep. do get to zone into looking after our health and our bodies, the spine. You sit up That's, straight. <coughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying, okay, G man. <laughs> uh, the spine is under the spotlight this morning. It's made up of 33 stacked vertebrae, right, that form uh, the spinal canal with its three main functions being protection of the spinal cord, providing that structural support which we all need, uh, which helps to maintain maintain an upright posture and of course enabling motion that also does play a major role in all our fundamental functioning thank you that was quite a, yeah. a, a, a scene setter man uh, right, right. I'm, I'm looking at this and wondering how close to this bent spine mine looks like right now well today we are thankfully joined by one of the pros dr Moni kruger from the chiropractic association of south africa to discuss the importance of looking after your spine doc thank you so much for joining us this morning i'm really excited to be here yeah. Um, this is this is really fascinating, Dr. Kruger. It, yeah. It's it's a little bit terrifying. As um, well. Uh, <laughs> I, one thing I've realized is I've gone through my rehab journey, okay, apart from uh, how many pages are dedicated to lower back pain on Instagram, yeah. um, which is crazy. You can, you've got a whole new career for yourself online um, just posting, posting videos. But, but up to what estimated 4, 540 million people globally suffer from lower back pain and it can be quite debilitating how much of your work centers on dealing with this guy right there yeah it's quite shocking to learn that one in four people globally have low back pain wow um, and that's why i really support the initiative of world spine day for sure because um you know these public strategies really bridges the gap between what public the public know about back pain and what really is going on with the research um, and it's especially important for the underserved communities that mm. we, we teach people how to look after their spines. Um, so yeah, the, the, the point of World Spine Day is to promote good posture, um, good lifting techniques, <laughs> mm. and, um, and um, being, uh, avoiding physical inactivity. Those yeah. are the big things. And it's very important, right? Because I think that a lot of us spend a lot of time seated looking at our laptops or our computers or working on our cell phones, whatever the case may be, I'm sure this affects the health of our spine. Yes, um, that forms part of the sedentary lifestyle, but I think is the problem is the static posture that you maintain sitting in front of your computer or yeah. in the office. So um, the way that we tackle that is, you know, we look at the way that people sit in front of their computers and we call that office ergonomics. I think most people are aware of that term. Um, so making sure that you lift up your screen, mm. that your desk is an appropriate height for your, for your body. Those are things that we can What is do. the appropriate height, if you don't mind me asking? Well, if you're sitting up straight, if your arms are by your side and your elbows are at a 90 degree angle, your desk shouldn't have your arms bent like this desk is a little bit high for it's me. It's a bit too high, okay. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's about right. How many so people if, know that? If your desk is a little bit high, you might end up shrugging your shoulders at the end of the day if your wrists, if, if your wrists are bent, bent like that. Okay. So um, another thing I think more so important than good office ergonomics is taking frequent breaks. Yeah. So every 20, 40 minutes, I think most people, like a lot of people have um, uh, smart watches and they say, get up and you kind of like ignore it. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> don't ignore that watch. Get up, do some stretches, consult. Maybe you can consult with a chiro or a physio and they can give you what we call office yoga. Yeah. And um, they can, that stretches that you can do at your office, you don't even have to take time out of your day to do it. Mm. Yeah, 15 minutes. I, I do a, a base 15 minute little stretch, 12 minutes in fact, that has made all the difference. We stand then. If, if sitting is killing our backs, then we stand. We stand. And we've seen that the, the, the standing desk has been a massive trend, and with good reason. I think it does, does help. What is the correct posture? And what should be, because this, for me, the mind-body connection is a big thing that we often, because you're not thinking about your spine, and you yeah. don't think that you can control the shape of your spine with you know, how you're thinking about consciously doing it. So what is the correct way to stand? And if we are working standing, what should we be aware of? Can I get up? Please, <laughs> do your thing. Please. All right. So um, if you are standing at your desk, we, we look at um, the patient or the, or the client from the side. Okay. So the ear needs to be in line with the shoulder. Okay. And then that balance is right across the hips. If your hips are in a front part, position like that, that can put some pressure on the back. So you want to make sure that you tuck, the pelvis is tuck that pelvis a little bit under. Your weight needs to be distributed, balanced between 
your feet. As you can see, my hips, I'm balancing my weight between the hips, so you can kind of like, if you're standing on one hip, that can also be a little yeah, bit detrimental. Mm. So like, yeah. standing versus sitting, um, I think that the best thing is that if you have a standing desk, that you can vary your position between standing mm. and sitting. Yeah, and then you can and do you those stretches moving, yeah. in between as well. Dr. Kruger, you really are fantastic, and I think it's such an important conversation to start having because our spine is so, so important. And it's been fascinating, really, just delving into that and seeing your comments that have come through on social media, but also just hearing what Dr. Marnie Kruger has got to share with us. Uh, if you've got any questions about, you know, spinal health, uh, and of course, you, you know, want to find out more about that, go on to our page. Espresso Morning Show, SABC3, ask those questions. Studies have shown that, you know, taking collagen, for example, yeah. may help ease lower back pain. And Graham knows all about that. It's Honest just, man. it's really just one of those incredible benefits. Yep, there is, in fact, a lot you can do, but it starts with being educated, yep. and that's why this Awareness Day is so important. Um, Doc is not going anywhere. Stick around. It's my feel good Welcome back. We are talking back pain, and I know that has piqued a lot of people's interest because so many people, in fact, an estimated 540 million people in the world, that's one in four, ultimately, are suffering from lower back pain at any given time. It remains the leading cause of years not fully lived, and often quite painfully, I think, at that. And we are back with Dr. Marnie Kruger discussing World Spine Day, which she says is vitally important to educator so if you have any questions please just hop onto our expresso morning show facebook page leave a comment or a question maybe you've suffered through an intense kind of back procedure and you've got some sage advice for us doc thanks so much for sticking around and for the private consultation because we've been pumping you for for info because we we're really, learning we can, so yeah. much right but here's the thing a lot of people do suffer from lower back pain some people more chronic than others right i mean how many times have you heard people say that they would they wish a kid would just walk on their back for a while <laughs> yeah uh, what are some of the most common causes of let's say for example chronic lower back pain Chronic low back pain, we are looking at pain that's probably, um, it lasts longer than three months. So before that, it's diagnosed as acute back pain. That's most likely an injury because injuries kind of resolve within four to six weeks. Chronic back pain is a little bit of a complex topic mm -hmm. because um, there's something that happens in your brain when you have chronic back pain and it's called pain centralization so your brain gets rewired and that's why it's so difficult to manage chronic pain um, and a lot of the time people will have pain that starts by itself so that means that whatever they're doing in their daily life that's contributing to their pain so if they're not changing if they're not Taking the tips that are readily available, you know, doing your stretches and getting up frequently, mm. I don't think they'll get rid of their pain by consulting with someone because you do have to... You're just going to repeat the same... Becomes their life. The same influences, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm. so that's why chronic pain is so difficult to treat. Um, one of the things that we were mentioning in the break was um, how counselling and um, speaking about your pain and um, managing your mental health is a very good strategy for people with chronic back pain. Mm. That's, that's crazy and it's, um, just pennies are dropping as you're talking, I'm thinking, wow, that actually really does apply to me. Wow, that's cool. Looking at this little guy here, you've brought along a model, Dave, we're going to call him. <laughs> uh, Dave? Come on, this is Josh. Josh, yeah, I know, this is a Josh. Totally a Josh. a bit of a hipster, <laughs> he likes his coffee. Um, can you talk us through, walk us through the anatomy and where, where are the dangers areas yeah where do people commonly feel the pain yeah cool yeah this friend of mine has been with me since varsity oh wow <laughs> <laughs> so this is the base of the skull and we've got seven neck vertebrae that attach to that so that's called the cervical spine um, at the back we've got the little joints which are called the facet joints and they provide the movement to the spine and you'll also see in between every segment we've got uh, intervertebral disc mm. so um, as we move down, we've got the mid-back, which is 12 vertebrae, and you'll notice that the orientation, like the way that this moves is a little bit different in comparison to the way that this yeah. moves in comparison to the way that this moves. Yeah. So um, after the 12 um, mid-back vertebrae, we've got the lower back, which is called the lumbar spine. And the lumbar spine, like, is, like I said, if, when you look at the, the little joints at the back, they l look very different when, yeah. to the ones at the top, and that's based off of what movement you get from from each of those okay. segments. So um, that's the 33 segments that you were speaking about. So at the bottom, we've got the sacrum. And the sacrum is actually just a bunch of fused 
vertebrae. So ah, wow. Oh, when that you, just, when okay. you grow. Oh, and then oh. at the bottom, you've got your coccyx. Okay. Afrikaans Tailbone. people <laughs> call this your stakey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then um, your, your sacrum is attached to the hip bones. And this is called the sacroiliac joints. So the sacroiliac joints being one of the things that most people have heard of when it comes to back pain. Um, the yellow little cables that stick out here, those are the spinal nerves. So your, you, that you mentioned that the spinal cord runs through the little column that's made up of all of these levels. And then you've got the spinal nerves that nerves go out of um, the little hole here, which is called the intervertebral foramen. Hmm. Which part of all of that is most at risk of I'm, I'm looking at that lower part going, danger, danger, <laughs> I mean, danger. It does look like it's susceptible. <laughs> so these are only the bones, the intervertebral disc and the, and the, uh, the spinal nerve. So what not, what's not pictured here are the many, many ligaments mm. and the, the, the tendons and the muscles. All the fascia that connects. Yeah, and the fascia and the connective tissue. So all of those, all of, actually all of the structures, you know, the SI joints, all of these have ability to create um, or generate pain. Um, and I think that's why it's so difficult to diagnose and tell people, listen, I think this is what, what your problem is. Mm. And, it's and why I think you've got to consult for a while and to yeah, diagnose and, it. Yeah, and, and you know... Is that, a, is that a herniated disc that's sticking out there? Because that's <laughs> yeah. freaking me out completely, yeah. Because <laughs> you've been there. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, been we've there. been there. Imagine that now just going, bleh. <laughs> yeah, so herniated disc, the disc is comprised of... There's two segments. There's an outer fibrous ring, mm. and then there's an inner gelatinous centre. When the inner gelatinous center leaks out, like in the case of this, so it can either be bulged or when it's ruptured, that fluid will leak out. Yeah, been there. The, the body actually recognizes that gelatinous center as foreign. So it will cause inflammation when it, when it, find, when it sees that, that center. Dr. And that, wow. <laughs> that can irritate the nerve, yeah. Yeah, no, that, that's cool. the big thing. Until you, uh, you haven't lived until you've experienced sciatic nerve pain. That's, that's, it, it's amazing to me to see it broken down like this, but I think it's vital to, to constantly remind yourself that it's one system that's all working together. Man, you are good at what you do. <laughs> and we're gonna be taking Crazy. your questions on our Facebook page, Express All Morning Show SABC3. Please get those through to us more with the good doctor a bit later on. It's my feel-good show. Welcome back. You're live with Express as we continue our discussion, in fact, wrap up our discussion with the awesome Dr. Marnie Kruger about World Spine Day. And we're going to now go online and answer some of your burning oh, questions. we've received lots of them. Let's take a look at some of those that have come through on our Facebook page with that hashtag Express Show. So the first one is from Roxy Mays, who says, my partner's back often pops out. I think that's the right term, question mark. And then he can barely walk for days. What could this be from? Hashtag Express Show. That sounds scary. I, like, see, <laughs> see someone. I'm it's gonna, a can I just question. Say, can I just say, go and see someone? Like, yeah, yeah. Please. So yeah. Because, is it the correct term that it pops? Um, I mean, that could be the sound that it made when yeah. the injury occurred. Um, there's different types of pops that can happen in the back. So if you have been to a chiropractor, you know that we do... I don't want to say pop the back, but, but yeah, you do but hear that sound, sound yeah. when we do the manipulation, and that's when a gas bubble forms inside the joint. Hmm. Um, but there can also be, you know, if there's a tendon or a ligament that ruptures, there can also be a, a, pop. a pop. And that can be quite detrimental. So having that checked out is really important. And what we spoke about is the fact that back pain is so multifactorial that mm. you really want to seek some advice from someone that knows. And if there something is, no is one repeatedly one. happening in that way, if it's a thing that's constantly, I think we get so used to, you mentioned that earlier, like mm. we just live with it. Yeah. Uh, but if, it's, if that pattern is constantly repeating itself, you need to see someone. Yeah, and it doesn't take, make take it less man. dangerous or less serious, but the fact that you can't walk for three days, I mean, that yeah, is no, telling. No, that is telling. Yeah. Uh, let's take a look at another comment that came through there. We got one from uh, B. Lona, who says, can extreme exercise cause spinal problems? Extreme exercise. Okay, so um, I'm assuming that means frequency or intensity. Mm. So frequency can contribute to things like um, overuse. I think that was something that was mentioned mm. in the free previous um, section. Mm. Um, overuse injuries is definitely something common with someone that exercises a lot. So active recovery is really important, making sure that you warm up properly before you exercise. That's a really important one. Cool down afterwards, because I find I ask patients, 
what do you do before you warm, before you exercise leg day? Now oh, I'll walk on that treadmill and then yeah. I'll, I'll go and do the weights. But really, warming up has got so many benefits. You know, you lubricate the joints, you wake up the mm. muscles. There's so many. So you're that's really ultimately important. going to get a better performance mm. out of that that's training right. session as well. But also cooling down afterwards. Yeah. Uh, there was one other very very interesting uh, question that came through on our page, and that one uh, came through from uh, Obedia, who says, "Hello, doctor. I had two Lami is it lamin laminectomies? That's great. Yeah, in 1984 and 1995, and have lived with back pain every day for all my life, and in my late 60s still uh, do. Now even worse, too scared to go for another operation. <sighs> sure. Yeah, that is a bit of a tough one. Mm. Um, I don't deal with surgery, so my comments. Yeah. Oh, not. I don't know. I'm. I'm. I'm more related to conservative management. Mm. I what think is a laminectomy, first of all? Lam laminectomy is when they remove this portion of the spine, and usually it is to to decompress this little window where the nerve comes okay. out of. So, um, I think. Going to your surgeon doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to end up having surgery. Okay. It means that you get an opinion of what your options are. Mm. So staying away from someone, I think that plays a big role in your mental health and that comes back to that. So mm. getting a consultation from someone can kind of put your mind at ease and um, you should be consulting with someone that, give, that gives you tools for everyday management for, for your pain because people that have experienced back pain will have good and bad days. Yeah. Do they have the tools in their toolkit to say, I'm having a bad day, what can I do at home? And at what point should I be consulting with someone for okay. my pain? So those yeah, I mean, my, my neuro is here because I'm convinced that I will never need the spinal fusion, fusion that he thinks I need, but he's been quite clear that that's the way he thinks and that's mm. what he's been trained to do. Mm. Uh, and I can see a chiro and I can see a, a physio and I can see a back specialist in other areas to, to look at it. But the key thing is, See, see someone. someone. Yeah. You're better off knowing. You're yeah, better off exactly. knowing what your options are. Well, listen, there is always help out there. In fact, on your screen right now, you're seeing the Chiropractic Association of South Africa. Their contact details are on there. Please do get in touch with them if you've got questions. They really do have all of those resources and all the answers to your questions. But most importantly, like we said, do see someone. Thank you, Josh. One. First Thank of all, you, you were fantastic <laughs> yeah. today. Doctor, you've been amazing. Thank Thanks you for having so me. much. What a wealth of information we've taken on board just this morning. Happy World Spine Day, everyone.